In May, Russia lost over 1,000 soldiers killed and wounded daily. The Russian army's losses in Ukraine in May increased dramatically due to the offensive in the north of Kharkiv Oblast with an average of more than 1,000 killed and wounded per day. The New York Times reported this citing US and NATO intelligence. According to estimates published by the New York Times, Russia lost almost 1,000 troops every day in Ukraine in May. At the same time, the Russian army recruits 25 to 30,000 men per month, which is roughly equal to the number it loses. According to the New York Times sources, such meat assaults allowed Russia to achieve one of Vladimir Putin's goals, which was to create a buffer zone along the border to make it impossible for Ukrainians to strike inland. On the other hand, the recruits Russia sends to the front to replenish casualties are inadequately trained, limiting Moscow's ability to assemble more combat-ready battalions while simultaneously increasing losses. According to the New York Times, American estimates of battle losses are based on satellite images intercepts, social media communications and official accounts from Russia and Ukraine. According to Western intelligence sources, Russia will not need to conduct any comparable mobilization or conscription this year because it will be able to replenish losses at the expense of both Russians and convicted Russian mercenaries in Africa. At the same time, according to the New York Times sources, Ukraine is busily building fortifications and laying minefields to stall Russia's offensive, putting it in a stronger position. According to NATO estimates, as of April, the overall losses suffered by Russian forces since the beginning of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine were more than 350,000. UK Defence Intelligence estimates that the total number of Russian losses since the beginning of the full-scale invasion likely reached 500,000. After drones, ground robots may be the next game-changer technology of the war in Ukraine. Ukraine has its eyes set on a dynamic fleet of ground robots to fight alongside and sometimes instead of its soldiers in combat as Kyiv continues growing its arsenal of unmanned systems, according to the Business Insider. It is noted that these robotic systems, also known as unmanned ground vehicles, can launch assaults on Russian positions, self-destruct next to enemy armor and deliver ammunition to frontline positions, among various other tasks. Unmanned ground vehicles have already carried out these kinds of missions, though not on the same scale as Ukraine's unmanned aerial vehicles and drone boats. Ground robotics is one of the solutions, Mykhailo Fedorov, Ukraine's Minister of Digital Transformation said in translated remarks shared with Business Insider. If robots can fight instead of people, why won't we try to do this? Ukraine hopes to use the new ground robots in different roles, supporting direct combat, mine laying and logistical operations on the battlefield. The new ground combat robots can assault and defend positions as well as conduct surveillance and reconnaissance, all while being operated remotely from up to two and a half miles miles away. The systems are armed with machine guns hardened against small arms fire and outfitted with the thermal imaging cameras for nighttime missions. The mine laying and self-destruct robots can threaten Russian armor, positions and supply routes. Strapped with anti-tank mines, these systems can charge into a target at over 15 miles per hour before detonating or they can drop explosives on the ground. They can be operated remotely from nearly three and a half miles away. According to Business Insider, the logistical robots, on the other hand, aren't necessarily capable of directly inflicting losses on the Russians, but they can be used for life-saving and resupply missions. These systems can quickly deliver ammunition and equipment to frontline positions and evacuate wounded soldiers. Fedorov said there's no exact number of robots that Ukraine is seeking because there's a constant need for them, so they are just trying to get as many as possible. The cost of the robots varies as each type has different variants manufactured across the defense industry. The evolution of unmanned systems has been one of the defining elements of the Ukrainian war. Beyond being used to conduct one-way attacks on enemy personnel and armor and keep soldiers out of harm's way, they have also given the world an unprecedented and often terrifying look at the conflict. Russian warships in the Sea of Azov are targeted by Ukraine's Neptune missiles. The Russian invaders have relocated their caliber cruise missile carriers to the Sea of Azov and naval drones cannot reach them there. Ukrainian military expert Oleg Katov told Liga media outlet about this. 
He recalled that first the occupiers rescued their ships from Crimea, then from Novorossiysk, Krasnodar territory, where they were also rescued by Ukrainian naval drones and unmanned aerial vehicles. They cannot leave the Black Sea through the Bosporus since Turkey has closed the straits to the passage of military ships. There is only one option left, the Sea of Azov. Ukraine has no access to this sea due to the occupation. The Kirsch Strait is now blocked, so Ukraine cannot reach the Sea of Azov with sea drones, the expert explained. According to him, in theory, such targets can be hit with the help of Ukrainian Neptune anti-ship missiles. It seems to me that nothing is impossible. But again, they launched launches. And where will they be charged? I'm not sure that there is infrastructure for charging missiles in the Sea of Azov, he added. According to the latest data from the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, since the beginning of the full-scale invasion, the invaders have lost 28 ships and boats, as well as one submarine. Previously, the Department of Strategic Communications of the Office of the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Ukraine published a map with the approximate locations of Russian ships, in particular the flagship of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, the cruiser Moskva, which took part in the capture of Zmini Island on February the 24th, 2022, takes pride of place on the map. On the night of April the 13th to the 14th, 2022, it was attacked by the Ukrainian armed forces, received serious damage and sank. This cruiser became Russia's most expensive military loss in the war with Ukraine. According to the assumption of the television and radio company Deutsche Well, with an initial cost of about $2 billion, the residual value of the cruiser was $750 million. Ukraine has granted the wreck the status of an underwater cultural heritage site. In the spring of the same year, two Raptor patrol boats and a landing craft were destroyed. Also on the map is the chemical tanker SIG, which was holed by a maritime drone on August the 4th, 2023. According to open sources, this happened near the Kirsch Bridge. On the same day, the large landing ship Olenegorsky Minor, located in Novorossiysk, was attacked. Exactly three months later, on November the 4th, the small missile boat Askold received a critical defeat in Crimea. Already on December the 26th, the large landing ship Novosherkask, located in the Feodosia area, was mortally wounded. Already on February the 14th, 2024, near the coast of Alupka, the large landing ship Sizakunikov received critical damage and sank.